This is a solar cell. Lots of solar cells that are connected together in a circuit make a solar panel. Solar cells work by absorbing light. Light contains photons which are bundles of energy or electromagnetic radiation. The solar cells are made up of layers of semiconductive material. One material has a positive charge, another has a negative charge. The combination of these two materials creates an electric field between the layers of the cell. When the photons enter the solar cell, they knock electrons free from the cell. Those electrons are pushed out of junctions in the cell and channeled through to the connecting wires, creating a flow of electricity which can then be used either directly in devices or stored in batteries for later use. We can check how much voltage our solar cells provide by using a digital multimeter and connecting the positive wire to the positive side and the negative wire to the negative side. Here we can see, even from ambient light, our solar cell produces a voltage. The maximum voltage I'm getting indoors from this solar cell is around 1.4 volts. When we move the cell to face the direction of light, we get a higher voltage. Beware of strobe lighting in this part. Now let's hook up a full spectrum LED light and test again. Here we can see that the voltage is increased as more light is available. Now the maximum voltage received is around 2.35 volts from a single solar cell. The maximum voltage available will be based on the manufacturer's specification for the cell. Mine was advertised as 2 volts with a current of 160 milliamps, which looks about right from this test. Solar cells can be arranged in series and parallel to achieve the desired output voltage. Connecting solar cells in series will increase the overall voltage in the circuit. Here we can see that the combined voltage of three solar cells in a series circuit is just over 5 volts, meaning each cell is producing around 1.6 volts. The current, however, is only equivalent to one cell. Here we can see the voltage of a circuit in parallel has a lower voltage, but it will have a higher current. Connecting solar cells in parallel will increase the overall current of the circuit and increase its milliamps. Most solar panels contain a combination of series and parallel circuits to achieve the required voltage and current. To use solar power effectively to power devices, it can be used in conjunction with rechargeable batteries which trickle charge using the solar panels. This helps to provide a constant flow of electricity from the battery to the device irrespective of the current weather conditions. The combined voltage of the solar power circuit must be equal or greater than the voltage capacity of the battery in order to charge it. A circuit with a higher current will also charge the battery quicker than one with a low current. Now that we know how to arrange our solar cells, let's connect these to a device to power it. Here I have an Arduino, a 3.7 volt lithium ion battery, with battery holder and a solar power manager. The solar power manager regulates the voltage from the battery into a 5 volt output, as well as allowing the battery to trickle charge when connected to solar panels. First, place the battery in the battery holder. This allows us to easily work with the positive and negative terminals. Next, connect the battery holder to the screw connectors of the solar power manager like so. There is a boot button on the board to turn it on. Press this button to turn on the board. You will then see a light turn on. Next, connect your solar panel to the solar terminals on the board. The voltage from the solar panels is regulated to 5 volts. You can safely use a solar panel with 5 volts to charge a 3.7 volt battery with this board. Then connect the solar power manager to your Arduino via the USB port. Your Arduino should now turn on. When our solar panels have enough voltage, the CHG light will turn on on our solar panel manager to indicate that the battery is charging. This completes the connection. If we only intend to use our board at specific intervals, when we program our board we can use the board's sleep function on it which puts the board into sleep mode, reducing its power consumption and giving the battery chance to recharge via solar energy. This concludes the video on using solar cells and panels. Thanks for watching.